In this episode of Real Chemistry, we're going to be practicing counting significant figures. If you haven't watched my previous video on counting significant figures, I suggest you do that first. There I go through each one of these significant figure rules in detail and help you understand what it is that they mean. So we're going to go ahead and get right to practicing. If we have our first number here, 0 0.0034, how do we count the sig figs? Well, I've divided this up into two steps over here. And then there's all the rules we need down at the bottom. So we're going to combine these steps and rules to count sig figs. So the first step, and basically, honestly, the only step, is identifying what types of zeros we have in our number. So if we take a look at this number, we have these three zeros up front. And remember, there's three different types of zeros we've talked about. We've talked about leading, which come first, sandwiched, which come in the middle of your number, and trailing, which come at the end of your number. So these are leading zeros. They come at the beginning of our number. All right, so we've identified the different zeros. That's step one. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to compare the types of zeros we have and the non-zeros we have to the rules. So the leading zeros that we have are not significant. And we know that from rule two. Rule two says leading zeros are not significant. So all these zeros, not sig figs. On the other hand, by rule one right here, we know that non-zero numbers are significant and three and four are both non-zeros. So how many sig figs do we have? One, two. So two total sig figs. All right, the next problem we're gonna practice is the number 34,200. Again, we're just gonna start by identifying the zeros we have. So here we have these two zeros at the end. Those come at the end of our number. So we know they're trailing zeros. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply our sig fig rules. And we know that the first three numbers, three, four, and two, are sig figs because non-zero numbers are always sig figs, which we know from rule one. Trailing zeros, which rule tells us about trailing zeros? That's rule four. And rule four says trailing zeros are not sig figs unless there is a written decimal point. So we look at our number. There's no written decimal point. Those zeros are not sig figs. So I'm going to put an X through them to tell us they're not sig figs. So how many sig figs do we have? We have three. Those first three numbers are only sig figs. Okay, our next problem is the number 34,200.00. And so again, we're going to identify our different types of zeros. Again, we just see that these four zeros come at the end of our number. That makes them trailing zeros. So we'll put a T there. And then we're going to apply our rules. Rule one says non-zero numbers are sig figs. That rule is almost always used. I suppose it is always used. So the three, four, and two are significant figures. The trailing zeros. Remember, the trailing zeros are dealt with in rule four. And rule four says that trailing zeros are not sig figs unless there's a written decimal point. Now here in our number, we actually have a written decimal point right there. So what that tells us is these trailing zeros are significant. So we have three significant figures that are non-zeros and one, two, three, four significant zeros. That gives us a total of seven sig figs for this number. So we've counted the significant figures there. There we see that the trailing zeros are significant because there's a decimal point. So those trailing zeros are the toughest category of zeros. Remember, if there's a decimal point, they're significant. If there's no decimal point, they're not significant. The next number we have is 972,002. Again, we're going to start by identifying the different types of zeros we have. And here, these zeros... They're what we call sandwiched. Why are they sandwiched? Well, there's a two in front and a two behind. So they're in between sig figs. They're in between sig figs, and that tells us those zeros are sandwiched. Which rule deals with sandwich zeros? Rule three. And what does it tell us? They are sig figs. So zeros between sig figs are significant figures. Sandwich zeros, in other words, are sig figs. So now when we go to count our significant figures, that guy's a sig fig, that guy's a sig fig, that guy's a sig fig. Those are all significant figures by rule one, which tells us that all non-zeros are sig figs. Then we know these sandwich zeros, they're also sig figs, and our last two, also a sig fig. So total here, we have six digits, and all of them turn out to be significant. So we have six sig figs. All right, 
In this problem here, we actually see all three types of zeros. And so this is a nice problem to take a look at. It really helps you kind of nail down what we mean by each of these zeros types. Okay, so these first two zeros up front, leading, trailing, or sandwich. Well, they come up front, so they're leading. So we'll put an L. These two zeros, they're in the middle of our number, sandwiched by a five and a two. So we call those sandwiched. So those are sandwich zeros, and they come in the middle of our number. At the end of the number, we have these two zeros. They come at the end, so they're trailing. So I'll put a T. Now, when we go to count sig figs, we see rule one, oh, I'm sorry, rule two says leading zeros are not sig figs. So that means that these leading zeros up here, not significant figures. The four and the five, sig figs by rule one. So rule one tells us that non-zero numbers are sig figs. And so the four and the five are both significant. The sandwich zeros, they're significant. How do we know that? We know that by rule three. So rule three tells us these guys are significant. Rule one tells us our two again is significant. Trailing zeros, all right, what do we think here? Well, trailing zeros are not sig figs unless there's a written decimal point. And here we can see, guess what? We have a written decimal point. There's a decimal point there right at the beginning of the number. It doesn't matter that it's way at the beginning of the number, there's a written decimal point. So those guys are sig figs. So we do count those last two trailing zeros as sig figs. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and count those up, because there's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total sig figs. So that number has eight sig figs. That's a nice practice problem to take another look at. It goes through every type of zeros. Remember, leading zeros, beginning of our number. Sandwich zeros, middle of our number. Trailing zeros, end of our number. And we have to categorize those zeros if we want to know how many sig figs we have in a number. All right, and now what we have is a number in scientific notation. This is the only one where we don't even need to identify zeros. That's not important for scientific notation. Because remember, all digits written in scientific notation are sig figs by rule five. So all we really have to do is count the digits. And how many are there? One, two, three, four. We have sandwiched zeros there, that's the one between the two and the three, and trailing zeros there, that's after the three. But we don't even have to think about those, it doesn't matter. If they're written in scientific notation, they are in fact sig figs. Now we don't count, what we don't count is this 10 or this minus four. They're not significant figures because all they're doing is moving that decimal around. So they're not sig figs. So how many total sig figs do we have in this number? Four. So we have a total of four sig figs in that number, and that's by rule five, probably the easiest rule to apply. All right, so thank you for watching. We've gotten through some more practice on counting significant figures. If you still feel a little iffy on this one, I recommend going back to the previous video on counting significant figures, the introduction video on this. If you wanna take a look at my other chemistry videos, visit my channel. You can always su subscribe to get updates about new videos, and leave any comments or questions you have below, and I'll take a look at them.